So uh, it's Ron and Todd, and we're here with his Diablo. And I'm just going to ask Ron some few questions on, on his beautiful build that he's got here. So uh, first thing, why did you start this? Oh, when I was just a little kid, I always wanted to build a car from scratch. Really? And when I finally got to the point of being retired, I said, if I don't start doing it now, I'm never going to get it done. So I started huh, Cool. When I, when I retired. Really? And this was the, this was the one. This was going to be the one. <laughs> so how long did it take you to build? Start to finish, 14 years, four months. Wow, 14 years. I so. never thought it would take that long, but I couldn't help myself. <laughs> nice. So you're always interested in cars or...? Yeah, I, I guess so, always. I mean, uh, I, I've always liked them. I, I've always worked on them myself. And uh, you need a lot of experience when you're working on old cars, trying to keep them on the road, yeah. you know. And then I took an auto body course for a short while, but I never got into the business. Instead, I got into uh, uh, designing machinery, mechanical design. So that gave me a good background in, in how to design and make things work. And uh, I had a lot of fun at that, and then at some point uh, the work wasn't there for me, so I switched over to uh, technical illustrating, where you uh, make those drawings of uh, explosive views of how things go together and that kind of stuff. Did work for the Army and Navy in nice. their tech manuals. So why a Diablo? Why did you do this? I really wanted to build a GT40, but my cousin is Daryl Kerbin, and Daryl was the D in DNR, and he okay. was into these. And when I told him, I want to build a, a GT40, he says, no, you don't. No, you, you want to build a Lamborghini. So I started looking at him more and saying, yeah, that's a nice car. And that's how I got into Lamborghini. Yeah, well, I tell him, I'm really glad you did, because this thing is awesome. <laughs> Thank it's, you. Where were you building this? Were you building this out of your shop at home sort of thing? Or? Well... When I started, for about the first two and a half years, I was working up in Daryl's uh, garage. He has a uh, auto body shop up there. Okay. And since I wasn't, I was familiar with machine design. I wasn't familiar with how you turn a, build a car from scratch. And he had done a lot of them before. He was into this for a long time. So I worked out of there so I could get some personal guidance. But after two and a half years, I, I suddenly realized this thing is going to go on forever. So <laughs> instead of paying rent and and overhead and all that kind of stuff and plus all the traveling back and forth I said you know I have a I have a two-car garage in my basement I should be there so I moved every everything down to my house bought myself a uh, air compressor got some air tools bought a welder and I started working out of my own garage and it was it was a lot nicer building at home I'll bet you can do what yeah. you want and everything. <laughs> yeah. so let's start now chassis what did you do there the chassis, the floor pan was a uh, started out as a Pontiac Fiero. Not much left to it. Uh, it starts at the back, back there, and goes up, up to the windshield. It's got the Fiero heater and the Fiero floor pan and the pedal assembly, and that's about it for Fiero. The rest of this chassis was a, a all custom-made steel tube chassis, and I made a subframe in the back that holds the engine, transaxle, and suspension. And I can just drop the whole thing out the back and take it away. Nice. Put it back in. So it worked out really good. The, the suspension all the way around is Corvette C5. And it, the back, cha it, it, complete with the aluminum chassis on the bottom. Of course, we used Corvette rails in the back too. Uh, I just kept that as part of the subframe. But up front, we just used the, the aluminum chassis. And the back was narrowed three inches. And the front was narrowed two inches by taking a piece right out the middle and then welding the aluminum back Bring together. Bring it back yeah. together. Nice. Yeah. And the reason we did that was to get the right offset on the wheels, the right depth for the wheels, so it gives you the right look. Cool. Cool. And the engine and transmission? The engine started as a 95 Corvette uh, LT1. It's a 350 Q, but it's now a 383. And I have 32 valve Hemi heads on it. I have a comp cams cam. Uh, larger throttle bodies, bigger injectors. Um, it's monitored with a uh, fast XFI uh, engine management system that I can plug into my laptop and program the, uh, the, the, the computer, tune it up uh, nice. at the engine. And it's estimated to be about 650 horse. Oh, is that all? Yeah. <laughs> I had a, had a custom make my own uh, headers because 
where are you going to buy headers? Yeah, yeah, can I get headers? So I have, I made my own equal length headers into three inch collectors, into a three inch X pipe. I have the O2 sensor in my X pipe, so it reads the whole engine, not just half an engine. Then it goes through two Borla mufflers and down and out the back. And then I collected air off of my rocker scoops on both sides and went through uh, two uh, fans. They're 240 CFM fans that blow air into an aluminum chamber, a ductwork around my X-pipe and my mufflers and sends cooling air across there and it exits out the grill between the taillights on the back. Really? So I have a... And you can't see any of that. Can't see any of it. It's all (laughs) hidden underneath there, but that's trying, I'm trying to get the heat out of that engine compartment. Wow. The the headers and and all of the exhaust pipes are uh, ceramic coated. And the ceramic coating helps with the heat too because it keeps the heat in the pipe instead of radiating into the engine compartment and stuff. And of course it looks good. Yeah. yeah. You can't see that either nope. <laughs> for yep. everything that's in there. Yeah. But I ceramic coated the, the exhaust system on it too. And another feature I have to help try and keep it cool is I have a large oil cooler horizontally across in front of the engine with two six inch fans on there. So if it gets hot enough, the fans kick in and cool the oil and blow air up across the front of the motor which is kind of hard to do on a mid-engine car yeah. so i have air circulating across the front of there holy cow and then this car with the double scoop roof pulls air in across the top and washes air across the top of the engine to try and get rid of some heat that way too so i'm hoping nice. i'm hoping wow should be okay and that's the other thing it's just finished just getting on the road yes after those 14 years yeah so this is great that you made it to carlisle this is it debut (laughs) (laughs) yeah great one the front the front trunk is motor operated i had to make my own hinges because uh i couldn't motorize it with the regular car trunk hinges that most people use so i had to make my own hinges to go and pivot back under the dash behind the windshield and they come down and still clear everything and still work and still get activators in there yeah yep Yep. wow and then i had an issue too with the uh, brake booster because when that hinge comes down there's the brake booster right right behind it and uh, it works (laughs) (laughs) it still works that's amazing and uh it when it comes down it latches and when I hit the button to open the trunk, the first thing it does is it pulls like a, uh, a door lock actuator and unlatches. Okay. And then the motor takes it up. So so it automatically unlatches and the motor drives it up. And when it comes down, it catches again. So it's all all done with the remote control. All with the remote. And inside inside here, you see the window. I have a window, and, and behind there, there's a box for my my amps and the. Uh, Thanks for the speakers. All the crossovers? Yeah, the crossovers. Yeah. And I, I have also uh, two LED uh, lights on, in there that I can throw a switch and light the, the amps up. I was going to do a one-way mirror on there, and I had this film to do that with, but I wasn't very good at it. So I said, I'm just leaving it for glass <laughs> for now. We'll see how that goes later. <laughs> yeah, it still looks great. And underneath the carpeted panel for the floor, I can just take that out, and I have uh, places to put jumper cables on the batteries because you can't get to the batteries. They're under the headlights. You have to jack the car up and drop the batteries out, and they swing out on uh, articulated mounts that bring them down and out to the front where you can get to the battery under the bumper. Really? Yeah. (laughs) And I found out that it's awful hard to lift those batteries back up into place. So I put gas struts on them. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. so now you can you can lift the battery back up oh, and the place yeah. under the under the front. I have on this side I have a uh, deep cycle battery that uses to power all of these accessory motors. And on 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 the passenger side under the headlight is the uh, battery that powers the engine. Cool. Hey, you were thinking of everything. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to keep up on it. Now I know the mirrors too. You got them flipping up, and that was because. You know, there's, this thing's so wide. It is. It's very wide. And even if I wanted to park it in my garage next to another car, you really need to do something about that. So I looked at various ways to make them hinge, move, do something, and came up on this. There's a there's two spherical rod ends make a hinge, and the whole thing has a little arm to the inside. There's a rod that runs down inside the door and down in the bottom. I have a... Um, 
trunk pull down motor. They only have to move oh, about yeah, an yeah, inch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's enough to pull that. When that pulls down, it flips that mirror up. When you turn it the other way, it pushes it down. And there's a positive mechanical stop on that so it can't go too far because you can see it really just clears the mount. Yeah, and it's so, got enough torque on it to wrench it up there. Now. Yeah. It, yeah. it works fine. It pulls yeah. good. It, there's not much on, on a mirror, but I got it working. Right. And then, of course, the mirrors also have the flex. Oh, yeah, yeah. On them. So breakaway. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So that works too. The doors on here, while we're at it, I made the door skins removable. So if you need to service a window, a power window motor, the mirror lift motor, the door locks, anything. You take the door skin off, there's seven screws, you take it off, you put it back on, the screws are all countersink heads so everything lines up exactly the same spot. and it's right where you had it before. Nice. So That's great. The door skins come off on both sides. Had to. Just yeah, had to. Geez, yeah. Inside, you can see I had the, the, the standard Diablo uh, console, but I had to add three switches across the front of it. The one over there controls the glove box door, opening and closing. The one in the middle controls the wing flap, and the one on this side raises and lowers the deck lid. So I had to put those in. And then, like I said, the, the glove box over there was where they had their airbag. But I made it into a glove box, and the motor drive will open and close the, glo the glove box. Oh, nice. It automatically lights the light when you do it. And also inside, I put another glove box in the back of the console over right. here. And it's got a sp it spring loads close and spring loads open. Mm -hmm. So it'll stay in either position depending on which way you want to go with it. All this stuff has to be custom made. You can't get this off the shelf. That's unbelievable. You, you can't. You can't. Yeah. And back here, we talked about the engine and... and trans and stuff but the engine cover handmade all of the stuff except for this uh, uh, the centerpiece and I bought those plastic simulated heads but I had to modify everything to make it go together and fit and give me enough room inside to open and close but the gas strut takes a lot of the weight off and then there's a rod that comes under here to a power window motor laying on its side pushes and pulls raises and lowers the engine cover the engine, the size of the engine compartment. I had one picture of the engine compartment of a of a Diablo, and I had no panels, so I made them by hand, handcrafted them, and got them to look just like a Lamborghini. Made the air boxes, and they have a, a Viper air filter, one on each side, and the air air comes in through those vents into the into the box, goes around through the tubes and up to the front. So all of that intake air system works and then shape the whole thing out and then even for these uh, air box covers here they're recessed I I'm body body work this until it came down and flushed with this so that it looked unbelievable it looks professional it looks, it looks right it does yeah so I had to get all of that right and then you see it goes up around the uh, where the radiator cap is and on that side the push pull rod had to go through the, cu the side panel and on this side it goes outside of it because it's different from one side, one to the, side other. the other yeah yeah yep. that's the way Lamborghini was and that's the way I am <laughs> yeah. nice <laughs> made all that even on the rear wing you've got this activating as well yeah there's uh, a, I had to create a small box under here there's a, a panel underneath that I can take off with four screws there's a power window motor in there and I have a backup camera in there and then the power window motor uh, as as that turns, raises and lowers this this wing. So unbelievable! And it's a ZF transmission that all that's hooked up to the uh, the engine's hooked up to, right? Right. I have five a speed or Kennedy adapter to a ZF2 five speed manual yeah. transaxle, which is the, basically the, the same thing as in a GT40, right? Yep, GT40s. Yeah. Uh, Panteras use them. Right, Panteras. Yeah. Yep, they all use them. That's heavy duty stuff. It is. Yeah, it's the, built uh, for the purpose of this. Yeah. The differential ratio is 422 to 1, which is like strong. That's power. But fourth and fifth gear are both overdrive. So you pick it up on the other end. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know? Nice. So this thing will just get up and go. And the two means limited slip, so I got both wheels driving. Nice. I'm not going to burn one. Yeah. I doubt if I'm going to burn two. I, I, I'm... <laughs> 
I don't know. After 14 years, you're probably like me with mine. You know, it's like I want to. It's my baby. I don't yeah, want to break it now. And, I'm gonna baby this thing. Yeah. <laughs> after 14 years, I'm sure you are. You, yeah. 